Turn with me in your Bibles to Leviticus chapter number 23. Amen. I'm telling you, I love when folks share about what God is doing in their life. I'm a good friend that <clears throat> we've been friends over the past several years who was in New York City living a life just full of sin and drugs and uh, had money and resources. Uh, but one day I woke up and uh, discovered that this wasn't the life that was fulfilling, opened the Word of God, and God transformed him, saved him, delivered him, filled him with the Holy Ghost, amen, changed his life, amen, and God changed his lives. Amen. We're getting ready after Labor Day to head into the fall season. And uh, before you know it, we'll be winking our eyes. It'll be Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, uh, all those significant things. Things that are significant to us. I, I, I have to tell you, I like Labor Day. It's a, it's a day off work. Amen. It's a four-day work week. Amen. I enjoy all that. So I, I enjoy those things. But when we look at the Word of God, even in Israel's worship, there were uh, seven feasts that were significant in the Old Testament. There was the Feast of Unleavened Bread, of Passover, celebrating the del deliverance from Egypt. There was the Feast of Weeks, or that of Pentecost, uh, the blowing of the trumpets, the Day of Atonement, the Feast of Pur Purim, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, uh, you can look at others, you know, when you look at the Old Testament, Hanukkah, uh, uh, all those, uh, even extra biblical feasts that, that are in the Jewish tradition, amen, that uh, are celebrated. Uh, and so I want to look this morning just for a few moments at the Feast of, uh, of, of Tabernacles and the Feast of, of Gathering and how important that is and what it means to us this morning as believers. And I believe that when we come together for worship, I believe that I have something to offer to us this morning as we look at gathering together for worship. How can we do that when we look at a diverse crowd and folks going through different things? Well, I'm, I'm going to show you from the Word of God this morning. Amen. As, 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 uh, as folks were commanded here on this Feast of Gatherings in Leviticus chapter number 23, verse number 40, the Bible says, And ye shall take on the first day the boughs of God, goodly trees, branches of trees, branches of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God. Amen. You're going to take on goodly trees, the palm trees, the fig trees, the willows of the brook, and ye shall uh, before the Lord your God seven days rejoice. Amen. And so if you notice that here is harvest, it is coming, they're collecting everything, and there is a week full of harvest in this Jewish feast as they are gathering together and they are celebrating. So we find that there are seven days they're gathering together the seventh day. Uh, toward the end you'll find that what they're doing with the bounty of their harvest. But I particularly want to look at the five days, uh, probably five days by tradition, of what they are doing in the collecting of harvest and what they are doing uh, uh, with the harvest afterwards. The Bible says that uh, they were to come to worship together together in Jerusalem and uh, there were different things that they were to bring as far as trees but there are two trees that are specifically named that they are to bring. Did any of you notice what the trees were in our text? Amen. Good job Sister Rachel. They were to bring palms and they were to bring willows and uh, those were what was commanded during the seven days that they were to rejoice before the Lord with a palm branch and with a willow. Now stop for a moment. Just, just let's compare those for just a moment. And maybe you've never thought of this before. Uh, allow me to expound, if you would, this morning for a few moments. 
They are really uh, in great, great contrast to one another, a palm tree and a willow tree. Could you get a visual in your mind, put a palm tree in one place and put a willow tree in the other place? And as you look at them, even in their nature of what they look like, they are adversely different from one another. The palm tree stands upright, and what does a willow root tree do? He kind of just droops all over. And so the palm tree, its branches, it reaches up to the sun, while the willow tree, it kind of bends down. And so we have the going up straight, the bending over, we have the reaching up, we have the bending down, we have that uh, the palm tree that, that basks in the sun, but if you ever look at a willow tree, a willow tree in, in itself, its nature, it, it, it's in a, 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 a kind of a shaded place, a place where there is water, a place where it is damp, and so there they are in contrast to one another, uh, the damp place, the shaded place, uh, the place where there is sunshine and then you look at the palm and it is evergreen but uh, but the willow is uh, uh, in its nature it's not evergreen it will shed its leaves and so there is the palm tree it bears fruit but uh, the willow tree it produces thorn how adversely different from one another these trees are the palm tree grows in the sand and the willow tree, it grows in the mud. And if you look at Scripture, you will find that even in Scripture alone, these trees are used very differently from one another when you look at the context of where they are in Scripture. The, the palm tree, it speaks of victory. Remember, uh, uh, there it was that when Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, that they were waving palm branches. They were welcoming him as a victorious king. They misunderstood what was happening with Jesus, uh, but nonetheless, they were waving palm branches of victory. We look at uh, a Song of Solomon, and uh, the Bible says uh, that the, the, the posture of his bride was like the palm tree. Uh, 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 the, the psalmist uh, says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. So the palm tree has this of great victory, this of flourishing, uh, this of uh, 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 things that are positive. When we look at it, when we look at the willow tree, and in contrast, you find that the willow tree speaks of sadness and exile. Do you remember David, the Bible says in Psalms 137, by the rivers of Bacon, uh, uh, there they sat down and we whipped and we remembered Zion and we hung our harps on the willows. And so you have the palm tree of all the victory and wonderful things. You have the willow in contrast, amen, that, 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 that it is a place where they hang their harps. The music has died. The joy has died. The gladness has died. The palm tree uh, it, it, it is victorious. The weeping willow, uh, it, it is not so much. And so I want to look at this thought this morning. Amen. Bring it all to Him. Bring it all to Him. Amen. The Israelites, amen, they were instructed to bring the palm branches. They were instructed to bring the willows. And during this week of harvest, you are to worship God. You are to bring everything to God. Amen. I, 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 we want it all. Amen. The good, the bad, the ugly, the happy, the sad. Amen. It's all worship to God. Whether it's the palm or whether it's the willow, it's all worship to God. Now I'm going to give you something and hold on to your seats because I'm going to blast you with a bit of knowledge that maybe you've never known before. But life is full of good and bad. It's full of joy. It's full of sorrow. Amen. And there are good moments in every person's life. There are bad moments. Amen. The, the willow moments where there's moments of, uh, of sadness. Uh, there are moments where there are the palms and moments of victory. Think about the force for a moment. One moment that floors it, 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 is, is creating things for a wedding. The next moment that floors is creating something for a funeral. Think about the church. It's a wonderful place. We have weddings. We have baby dedications. We have salvations. And, and, and this is also a place where we conduct funerals. And so life is full of, uh, of the good and the bad. Uh, uh, Solomon said there's a time to, 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 to weep and there's a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn. There's a time to dance. Amen. Sometimes we just mix it all together because they go hand in hand in life. 
Amen? Amen. You find that? The good, the bad, the happy, the sad, all mix of life. Paul told us as Christians that we're to rejoice with them that rejoice, but we're to weep with them that weep. Amen. Like I said, the floors, amen. Uh, everything about the floors. Sometimes it's a wedding. Sometimes it's a funeral. Amen. It's the velvet touch of the universe. Amen. The willows and the palms. Two facets of life. Joy and sorrow. So closely associated. Think about this. A traveler had traveled to Africa. And the traveler tells about the eight-inch wingspans of beautiful butterflies. Can you imagine butterflies with an eight-inch wingspan? How beautiful that is. Talking about the huge orchids. Orchids are beautiful. I just recently discovered the Wesley Carter. He's a chef, and he works at this very elaborate restaurant. Do you know that you can eat orchids? It's the one flower that you can eat. And so with every meal that they serve, they serve an orchid to eat. I'll pass my orchid to you. Thank you. And I'll also pass the bill. <laughs> uh, we find that there are magnificent waterfalls. And then in, there, in, 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 in Africa, amen, the rain grows that, that radiate off of the mist of the waterfalls. All these beautiful things. But then that same person tells you about the snakes and the carnivorous bees. It tells you about the insects and the pests and the headhunters. Do you know that life, amen, is an adventure just like that tropic forest? Amen. Success kind of lies right beside failure. And trial lies right beside tragedy and joy and heartache. Why, they just kind of go hand in hand together. And weeping and sorrow may all come in the same day or maybe one day after the next. Amen. Uh, do you, can you imagine this? That there on Golgotha where they crucified Jesus, that place in the skull, there was also a garden. And so it all goes hand in hand. Imagine this, that in one hand in life you carry a palm. Amen. There's victory and there's joy and there's happiness. And in the other hand, you carry a willow. We both carry one. And sometimes the willow, it's a little higher than the palm. So that's what we experience. But sometimes the palm is higher than the, the willow. So we experience the goodness of that. Amen. The times of, of laughter and the times of joy. Amen. That is what life is made up of. I read a story of a man who was driving through Texas. He was a New Yorker and he collided with a, 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 a trailer that was carrying some, um, some, some steers. And, and uh, uh, there he was, he was laying on the ground and there he was hurt. And he heard one person say about how the, one of the steers had broke their leg. And so uh, the, the Texas Ranger came and shot the steer, put him out of his misery. And he came over to the man and he said, sir, how are you feeling? He said, I'm feeling pretty good. He called his insurance agent a few uh, weeks later. He said, I feel terrible. He said, well, tell me why you told the Texas Ranger you were feeling so good. He said, it's all in perspective. You see the steer that's shot because he has a broken leg? Hey, man, you might be feeling a little bit better when the Texas Ranger asks you how you were feeling. So life is really about perspective and having the right concept and recognizing that even when we're going through the bad, that God is still good and God is still worthy to be praised. Amen. God wants us to worship Him. In the tabernacle, they were told to bring both the palm and the willow. Rejoice in your God for seven years. You may be hearing me say, Blessed Bill. Pastor, do you really know what I'm going through? How can I rejoice? Well, today it might be the way. But I want to remind you that in your other hand is the power. Tomorrow will be the power. God wants our worship. Amen. Both are to be brought to the Lord. Amen. God wants our worship. Amen. In the palm and in the willow. I think there, there are times in our life when the palm is in our hand and everything is going well. We fail to worship. And you may say, well, that should be the easy time, Pastor, that we can worship. You're right, that should be the easy time to worship. But all the time we're thinking that we've done it. We pat ourselves on the back. And we think that we've got this and this is how life should be. But life is made of the palms and the willows. So if you're raising your hand with a palm this morning, amen, God wants that hand raised again in worship. Amen. We should be thanking God for all the blessings 
You remember one day Jesus met ten lepers. Amen. He told them to go and show themselves to the priest. And as they went, they were healed. And they looked and the leprosy was gone. But only one out of the ten came back to thank Him. I'm fearful that we in our life so often are the nine tenths that forget to thank God for all the good things that He's done in our life. Amen. If life is smooth sailing for you, you have every reason to worship God. It's not what you've done and what you've achieved and what you've merited, but it's because of the blessings of God. And God is good when life is good. And God deserves and desires our worship. Count your palms. I wonder this morning how many palms do you have versus willows? I'm sure that there are many in here that if you were counting your palms, you would find that your, your palms way outweigh your willows. Count your blessings. The Word of God says this, that we are to rejoice with them that rejoice. Since it's Jan, you may this morning have a whole best full of palms, and maybe I have willows, but God has commanded me that when we come together, that I am to rejoice with you because you are rejoicing. Amen. There's something about gathering together with God's people that we need to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. You may say, Brother, I, I, I have problems. Amen. I have difficulties. I have the willows. Amen. I want you to know that God has given you the willow because it gives you greater opportunity this morning. Are you listening to me? You want to always live with the willows in your head. Amen. There are greater opportunities that lie ahead. You don't know what God is going to do with that willow. You don't know that that valley, God is going to turn it inside out and make it a mountaintop. Amen. Take the willows that are in your hand and worship God because there are greater opportunities. I believe this, that God, amen, can promote us in spiritual uh, maturity when we have the willows in our hands. He said, you give the famine in Psalms, chapter number uh, 105 or 16. He said, you, see, you send the famine. It's my my opportunity to break bread for you. You have the willow and it's difficult. Allow God to break the bread for you this morning. It's going to take you to a deeper level. Amen. It'll give us a sense that I can't do this on my own. I'm not independent, but I'm very dependent on God. So with the willows in my hand, I come worshiping God because God, I need you this morning. Amen. And then it takes our heart and it prepares us for ministry to others. You have the willow, but one day your friend will have the willow. One day your brother or sister will have the willow. And you'll be able to minister because God ministered to you while you had the willows. Be thankful for the willow. Amen. Some of the richest things in life arise out of the people's struggles. Amen. Do you know that sometimes it's the best wood? Brother Craig, you're a woodworker. Some of the finest wood is because they endured the bitterness of the cold. They endured the wind. They endured the hottest of temperatures. So the best of wood is made from it. Do you know that some of the greatest of, of fruitful portions, amen, of a life is because they endure the difficult. You take a clay pot and you leave it sit out in the sun and it will only be a clay pot. But if you take that clay pot and you put it through the furnace, it then becomes porcelain. Which would you rather have? A clay pot or porcelain? Amen. The willows allow us to become the porcelain. You see, it is no mean thing that God chose for us to put, be put in the furnace of affliction. Warren Worsby wrote this. He says, God's choice makes chosen men choice men. We are chosen not in the palace, but in the furnace. In the furnace, beauty is marred. Fashion is destroyed. Strength is melted. Glory is consumed. Yet here, love reveals its secret and declares its choice. God allows His most choice people to go through the furnace of life. The willows. Paul didn't realize that his thorn of flesh would make him a masterpiece of grace. Job 
didn't know that when he lost everything, that God was only going to make him better. One songwriter wrote, I thank him for the mountains, I thank him for the valleys. I thank him for the things he's brought me through. If I'd never had a problem, I'd never know that he could suffer. I'd never know what faith in God could do. The willows, the willows, and the palms. The willows and the palms. Listen, if you're here this morning and you're not saved, I want to tell you something. It rains upon the just and the unjust. But the good news is that when we give our life to Jesus Christ as the Spirit of God so wonderfully spoke to us this morning, that when we give our life to Jesus Christ, that when it rains upon the just, amen, that we know that God walks with us through the rain, amen, and we can still rejoice whether we have the willows or whether we have the palms. But can I tell you that for those who trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior, we read in the book of Revelation chapter number 7, the Bible says, that John says, and I look and behold, a great multitude with, with no a number of all nations, tribes, nations, and people and tongues standing before the throne, the Lamb of God. They were clothed in white robes and they had in their hands willows. They had in their hands palms. There's coming a day, saint of God, you might have some willows now. Amen. We talk about the Word of God and God will wipe away every tear from our eye. But I believe one day, Sister Jan, we're going to get to heaven and God's going to say, listen, Jan Picola, you've ran the race well. You keep that palm branch in this hand, but I need the willow. They don't come to heaven. So all of our heartaches, all of our bad things, all of our troubles, all of our trials, all the difficult moments, God says, they're, they're, they're God. Amen. You worshiped in the good and you worshiped in the bad and you were faithful and you learned to rejoice with those that were rejoicing even when you were not. Amen. I'm taking away your willows and now only you have palms to worship me for all with the good and the bad, the happy and the sad, the, the, the difficulties, the challenges, and they can change so quickly in life. But there's coming a day. Amen. We're all we're going to have are the palms of victory. Sister Holly, if you come to the piano, in the land, one day we're going to be Mother David, of perpetual palms. Think of that. Perpetual palms. Sister Susan, perpetual palms. No more sick family members. Sister Dean, no more sick family members. Amen. No more struggles. No more bad diagnosis. No more difficulties in life. No more misunderstandings. No more trials. Amen. We are going to have palms for all eternity. I want to ask you a question this morning. Do you want to go to that land? Do you want to go to that land? Do you want to see Jesus? It's all about the choice. We're going to keep praying. Even more of the answers. We're going to keep being faithful because God has always been faithful. When we don't understand, we don't have the answers. We're going to choose Jesus. The palm may be down in the hand, and the willow may be behind its hand, and we're experiencing that. But still, we choose to worship. I choose to. We have to look forward to the inheritance that's coming. We have to let a little bit of heaven touch our lives now to encourage us. We sing that song. My heart can go on singing when I'm paused to remember. A heart in tears, but a stepping stone. Along a path that's winding ever upward. 
this troubled world is not my final home. But until then, I'll go on singing. And until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold my sin. Until the day God calls me home. We call this Sunday morning worship. How can we come every Sunday and worship in all the seasons of life physically, but all the seasons of life spiritually and emotionally? You know how that we can do it? Because life is full of palms and willows, but we choose to worship God knowing that a little bit of heaven has touched our heart and we won't always carry palms, but we will carry, we won't always carry willows, but we'll carry palms forever. And one day, Sister Jan, I'm going to look around that throne of grace, and you know what? There's going to be a lady that I'm not going to be able to catch up with because she's running and waving her palm, worshiping the Lamb of God because God has been good to her, and she's rejoiced in every season. Amen, Brother David, that cane's going to be gone. Amen, you're going to run, amen, with the best of the best, with the palm. Amen, can you see Brother David? Amen, running with that palm, just worshiping around the throne of grace. No, no, no feet hurting. Amen, just in the presence of God. Amen, it's amazing to think about. Amen, but let us no more we be bothered by, uh, by, by anything. Amen, but you'll be running with palms. Amen, worshiping God. I wonder this morning, can I ask you to get around this altar? Amen. Maybe you have more willows in your hand than you your palms. But God wants the worship of your will. And maybe you've been living life pretty carefree this morning and all you have are palms. Life has been good. It's not because you've acquired it, you've done it. It's because God is good. And God wants to hear your rejoicing in the prayers. Amen. Saints of God, can everyone on this weather as close as we can find a place of prayer, but a place of worship with our palms and woes. Until then, my heart will go and sing. Everybody will. Amen. Let's get her in. I'm talking about worship this morning. I'm talking about bringing in all the good, the bad, the ugly. Amen. Just giving it to God and say, God, here I am worshiping with my palms and with my bows. Hey, listen. God wanted them all to bring it in and worship. Let's all gather in and worship this morning. Amen. Worship Him with your palms and with your Amen. Yeah. Yeah.